Hi. Let's continue. Uh, so uh, I remain at the theoretical level and today I'll continue one of the most uh, important notions I would say in the whole uh, mathematics. It's the notion of delta function. And it will be also central notion in our study of partial differential equations. So we introduced the function previously phi epsilon of x equals 1 over epsilon phi uh, of x divided by epsilon where phi of x is a function like this. So phi of x in phi infinity uh, phi of x is zero for modul x more or equal than 1. Phi of x non-negative. Phi of minus x equal phi of x. And the last but not the least, the most important, that integral from minus 1 to 1, phi of x dx equals 1. So there's a function which looks like this. Uh, this uh, condition that phi x is c infinity and uh, it is zero outside some finite uh, segment uh, is, uh, we have a standard notation. It is phi in c infinity zero. This subscript zero means uh, that the function is zero outside some uh, uh, finite uh, segment. Yes? Uh, or we can say that this function with compact support because support is the set where the function is not zero and the compact if all the support is on a finite segment. So it is a function uh, from C0 infinity. Now these two properties are, uh, uh, no, they are additional, not very important in fact. And this property is crucial, that integral of this function is 1. Now uh, the function phi epsilon is uh, the result. So this uh, substitution means that uh, they, uh, we compress this function so its uh, support is not from minus 1 to 1 but from minus epsilon to epsilon. And uh, we also uh, expand this function with factor 1 over epsilon. It looks like approximately like this. Uh, and uh, after these transformations, uh, integral of phi epsilon uh, equals 1. So uh, uh, phi epsilon c0 infinity phi epsilon of x equals 0 for modul x more than epsilon and the uh, integral phi epsilon of x dx equals 1. Uh, now uh, about the limits of integration. Uh, in fact, uh, this function phi epsilon is zero outside uh, this small segment from minus epsilon to epsilon. So it is, uh, we can put here any uh, limits, uh, lower limits should be less than minus epsilon, upper limits more than plus epsilon. So let me write from minus infinity to plus infinity. And uh, if um, I omit 
these limits, uh, this means uh, that I take integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. Let me detach it. Uh, yes, uh, not to avoid writing every time these two symbols. Uh, so uh, we have this function. And now the question is, uh, can we, uh, what can we say about the limit phi epsilon of x when epsilon goes to zero? Is there any sense in this limit? Uh, no, first of all, uh, consider the, uh, any point where x is not zero. Then uh, for sufficiently small epsilon, if epsilon uh, less than x, so uh, if epsilon less than modul x, phi epsilon of x equals zero. Yes, because its support of this function, where it is not zero, it shrinks, and uh, if x is somewhere here, uh, then uh, uh, it gets outside of support and stays there when epsilon goes uh, to zero. So uh, this, uh, um, uh, at every point uh, x, uh, where x, uh, so, uh, uh, limit uh, phi epsilon of x equals zero when epsilon uh, goes to zero uh, for uh, every epsilon which is different from zero. Uh, so everywhere but at zero, this function uh, is, uh, the limit is zero. Uh, about ep uh, the point zero, here uh, the value of epsilon, go, uh, the value of phi epsilon goes to infinity. It is inversely proportional to epsilon. So this means uh, that uh, limit phi epsilon of zero when epsilon goes to zero equals infinity. No, it says only that it grows uh, indefinitely, uh, exceeds uh, any uh, possible value. But we have that integral phi epsilon of x dx is one and uh, one and the same for all epsilon. Yes, so uh, this means uh, that something remains of uh, this function when uh, epsilon goes to zero. And so we uh, uh, define this uh, strange object. Uh, uh, first notation. Uh, let us denote this limit by delta of x. It is a standard notation. So this limit uh, phi epsilon when epsilon goes to zero, if it exists in any uh, reasonable sense, then uh, this limit is denoted by delta of x. Let's assume that this limit exists. So uh, we have the following, uh, delta of x equals zero for all x which are different from zero, first. And second, integral delta of x dx, no, let me write from minus infinity to plus infinity, equals one. So we have this uh, uh, apparently uh, uh, strange contradictory properties. So first of all, uh, uh, we see from this that 
something interesting uh, happens uh, at the point zero. Yes, we know that uh, the value is uh, not defined, uh, let us say it um, accurately, but uh, the something integral uh, nonetheless exists. So, uh, uh, next I will uh, explain it uh, on some, I would say, physical examples. Uh, so, consider the following uh, situation. We have, say, uh, a, a wire uh, with a, a variable thickness. So, thickness of this wire uh, depends on the point of the wire. <laughs> now, I uh, know it a little bit exaggerated. So, this thickness, or better to say, uh, the uh, area of cross-section is, uh, say, f of x. x is this coordinate. Uh, so, this is uh, our wire. And uh, if uh, it is material, so uh, it has some uh, density. Uh, density, uh, so uh, what is the mass of the wire uh, between, say, uh, the points A and B, uh, M, uh, A, B, equals the integral from A to B of, uh, say, uh, F of x dx. I uh, assume that, say, the density, volume density of the material is 1. And fx is linear density of the wire. So, linear density, so we consider a piece of wire between x and x plus delta x. It has some mass, and uh, m uh, x, x plus delta x, and uh, we uh, consider limit m x to x plus delta x uh, divided by delta x when delta x uh, goes to zero, and this is exactly f of x. Yes, uh, so this is uh, uh, the uh, notion of linear density uh, of the wire. Now, in particular, we can consider a wire uh, that uh, uh, That uh, fx equals phi epsilon of x. Yeah. So what is this? So, our wire for epsilon large uh, will look like this. Yeah. So, its density outside, say, from uh, mi uh, minus 1, 1, it is for epsilon equals 1. Uh, the wire looks like this. So, here its thickness is zero, and here it is zero, and here it uh, is uh, given by the function phi epsilon, uh, we, uh, phi uh, of x, which we uh, defined last time. Now, uh, consider when epsilon uh, goes to zero. So, if epsilon is much smaller, then we'll see this. No, I draw not to scale like this. Yes? Epsilon much less than 1. Yes? So, 
it is a point minus epsilon epsilon yeah between this point uh, all the mass is between this point but the density is much uh, higher it is uh, uh, of order 1 over epsilon uh, and so what happens when epsilon is zero when epsilon is zero all the mass is concentrated at one point uh, it is uh, x equals zero uh, this point uh, here is all the mass so we arrived at the more notion of point mass material uh, point or point mass uh, it is a, a very uh, uh, well-known notion in mechanics um, and uh, mechanics starts from uh, even at high school uh, starts from study the motion of a point mass a mass uh, with a zero uh, size uh, under different forces yeah so uh, we uh, know that in this uh, picture uh, the density of a point mass is uh, no mass of this point times delta of x. It is a point a point mass at the origin so we put the uh, point mass at the origin and uh, its density uh, it is not uh, density in our usual sense because in the usual sense the density uh, is infinite so all the mass uh, finite mass is uh, concentrated on a segment of zero length so its density is infinite but uh, uh, much more uh, sense is uh, if you uh, assume that it is a new sort of function uh, delta function uh, uh, which is measured not by the value at uh, each point but by integral along uh, different uh, segments or different intervals yes so uh, then uh, if you integrate this uh, density along some uh, segment which contains zero then you get one and if you integrate along a segment which is beyond zero we get zero so this is a quite a meaningful thing and much more physical much more closer to physics it is no coincidence that the notion of delta function and even notation delta function was introduced by physicist uh, Paul Dirac uh, in early 30s so it is uh, uh, because it required some physical imagination uh, to introduce such interesting thing. Okay, so uh, let us now uh, use a delta function and consider uh, different things which can be done with this function. So consider the function, uh, first of all, uh, I uh, wanted to introduce some uh, thing which is uh, uh, like a f differentiation formula. Consider the function phi epsilon, phi capital epsilon of x uh, uh, equals integral say from minus infinity to x uh, phi epsilon y dy uh, 
It is a primitive function of <coughs> delta of uh, this function phi epsilon. Phi epsilon is uh, this function. Uh, yes, a primitive function of this function. Uh, this uh, phi epsilon, which is equal when uh, zero when uh, x goes to minus infinity. Now, uh, what can be said about this function? Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, let me better denote it uh, by uh, uh, the uh, more traditional to denote it by the letter theta, theta epsilon of x. First of all, if you integrate from minus infinity to some point x which is less than minus epsilon, then the uh, result will be zero because here the function is zero. Less, if x less uh, or equal than minus epsilon. Now, if you integrate it uh, 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 till x, where x is uh, more than plus epsilon, then the uh, domain of integration will contain all the support of the function uh, phi epsilon. Yes, uh, because only here the function is uh, not zero. And the integral over this domain is 1. So it is 1 if x more or equal than epsilon. And uh, if uh, x is uh, somewhere here in between, uh, no, the result will be in between because the function is non-negative. So it will be between 0 and 1. Uh, zero and one uh, otherwise. So this function uh, is uh, uh, behaves like this. So its uh, graph is uh, the fall. So it is minus epsilon, it is epsilon. So here the function is zero for x is less than minus epsilon. For x is more than epsilon, this function is 1. No. Like this. And between uh, minus epsilon and epsilon, uh, the function uh, uh, smoothly uh, grows uh, from 0 to 1. So it's the graph of theta epsilon of x. Uh, it is a good function. We can even uh, see that because the function phi epsilon is an uh, even function, then uh, we can even have that uh, uh, it is one half uh, theta epsilon of zero equals one half. Yeah? So here it is one half, here is one. Uh, so uh, this is a good function. And uh, this piece where it is growing is from minus epsilon to epsilon. And so limit theta epsilon of x when epsilon goes to zero. Uh, so uh, if x is uh, uh, negative, then eventually it becomes uh, uh, less than minus epsilon, if epsilon goes to zero. This means it is zero if x less than zero. Uh, this value becomes the same, one half if x equals zero. And if x positive, then eventually it becomes more than uh, uh, epsilon. So if x is uh, anywhere positive, then epsilon becomes smaller. So it is 1 
if x more than 0. So we have this interesting function. Here it is 0. Here is 1 half. And uh, here it is 1. Yes, I uh, draw here small uh, circles to show that these points are excluded uh, from the graph. So graph uh, we move here, then we jump to one half, and then we jump to one. Uh, and uh, let us denote this function theta of x. Now, in fact, uh, uh, this one half uh, is not uh, very important. Uh, so, uh, uh, it is better to neglect it, to consider the function for values less than 1 and more than 1. And uh, uh, if you uh, neglect just one point, uh, it makes, uh, in this case, no difference. Uh, now, uh, we see that uh, the following fact, that theta epsilon uh, prime of x equals phi epsilon of x because theta epsilon is primitive function of phi epsilon so phi epsilon is derivative of theta epsilon everything is clear uh, and so it is quite natural to write Uh, if you go to the limit, that uh, theta prime of x equals delta of x. Because uh, left hand side uh, uh, theta goes to this function. Uh, theta prime, uh, no, so to say derivative, uh, but we don't uh, have, uh, there is, uh, does not exist derivative of uh, jump function, we have in the jump discontinuity, yes, uh, but uh, it exists in the sense, in the same sense as uh, delta function exists. So, uh, this function is uh, characterized not by its values at points uh, different uh, at uh, 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 just concrete points but by integrals of this function over some intervals yes and therefore uh, uh, we can uh, say what is integral of theta prime it is the change of the function, uh, difference of function between, say, the values of at the point B and A. Yes? Uh, this is pretty well defined. So this value, this difference is either um, 0 or 1. Uh, no, we don't consider uh, the uh, segments or intervals with the endpoints at 0. Uh, because certainly this is a singular point. So we have this great property and I have to say that theta of x is a famous function is called heaviside function It is uh, also uh, was uh, famous, uh, but uh, now uh, the role of heaviside function mainly uh, goes to delta function. Now, uh, we can, uh, uh, what we can consider further? Shifts of delta function. Uh, let us consider the function uh, delta of x minus x0. So we shifted it by x0. Uh, what is it? 
so this function is uh, equals uh, zero for all x different from x zero. Yes, and when uh, and we have integral uh, of delta of x minus x zero dx is again one. So we took this delta function or the unit uh, mass. Initially it was at zero and then we shifted to the point x zero. Yes? Uh, so the mass now is here and uh, the uh, function, uh, say if you consider the primitive function, uh, then this primitive function is zero to the left of uh, the point x zero and it is one to the right. Yeah? It is uh, uh, the function uh, theta of x minus x zero. So uh, the primitive function is shifted in the uh, more, more or less usual sense and its derivative is also shifted and derivative is uh, exactly a delta function because all the change of this function is concentrated at one point but here concentrated just the unit jump of this function. Uh, now uh, let us uh, consider the following thing. Suppose we have a function, say, uh, g of x is a continuous function. And what is integral g of x delta of x dx? No, integral also from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, how to multiply delta function by a continuous function? Uh, or better to say, no, uh, okay, so delta function is zero for x uh, negative and x positive, yeah? And so the product is also zero. So this product is zero here and here. Uh, so all this function is concentrated at zero. Uh, g of x times delta of x. Uh, uh, now to see what it is, uh, let us consider uh, uh, the function which is approximation of delta x. Uh, 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 so it is integral of uh, g of x phi epsilon of x dx. So instead of this uh, delta function uh, uh, which is infinitely high at this point and infinitely sharp, we consider a little bit uh, more uh, civilized function. So it is like this. Uh, this is some, this is our function f of x and this is a function uh, uh, phi epsilon of x and this is function g of x. Yeah? And we consider their product. And last time I proved that uh, uh, this uh, value uh, considers the limit of uh, this integral when epsilon goes to zero. So we consider phi epsilon, then epsilon goes to zero, so we consider sharper and sharper uh, this phi uh, epsilon when epsilon uh, decreases. And this limit turns out to be equal g of zero. Yeah, so uh, we found that uh, uh, this interesting thing, uh, and uh, uh, because phi epsilon goes to delta of x, 
uh, it is uh, only reasonable to say that uh, 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 g of x times delta of x equals g of 0 times delta of x. Yeah? Now, uh, by the way, uh, we can uh, argue uh, a little bit different. Uh, so, if you consider uh, this uh, um, function g of x near the point 0, uh, we uh, say that, uh, assume that g is continuous function. If it is continuous function, uh, then uh, for sufficiently small epsilon, uh, it is minus epsilon epsilon, and on this uh, interval the function changes uh, little. Yes, so it is between two bounds in uh, between minus epsilon and epsilon like this. And uh, when uh, we uh, so it is uh, g of 0, it is uh, this is uh, say uh, lambda uh, and this is lambda. Uh, yes, and when uh, epsilon goes to 0, this lambda also goes to 0 uh, because the function g is continuous. If it is, and if it is, uh, this, and our function phi epsilon is positive, yes? And this means uh, that uh, g of 0 minus lambda less or equal than integral uh, uh, g of x phi epsilon of x dx uh, less or equal uh, g of 0 plus lambda. Yes? Uh, now when lambda, uh, when lambda goes to 0, uh, this uh, goes to uh, g, uh, this goes to g of 0, here and here. So the limit is g of 0. And we uh, take this limit as uh, uh, the uh, value of uh, uh, this integral g of x delta of x. So now we can write uh, that integral g of x delta of x dx is g of 0. Uh, now we can shift uh, what is integral g of x delta of x minus x zero dx. So instead of g of x, we use a shifted function. Yes? No, by the same reason, we have uh, that integral g of x delta x minus x zero dx equals simply g of x zero. Because uh, we shifted delta function, uh, now we can shift all the picture back uh, or shift the, uh, this uh, origin to the point x zero and return to this uh, to this formula. Uh, so we found that delta uh, function uh, uh, has this, pro uh, this property. So uh, this is important thing uh, that using only integration but with delta function we can uh, find the values of function g of x at every point. Uh, uh, let me write it uh, uh, just uh, I choose different notation for the same formula integral g of x delta of x minus y dx 
equals g of y. Uh, what does it mean? It means uh, uh, on one uh, on the one hand, uh, this way I find the value of function at the point y, uh, but uh, much uh, uh, more uh, interesting meaning of this formula is the following. We take uh, this function g of, uh, a shifted function g of x minus y, uh, this time they uh, consider as a function of y, yeah? And uh, x is a parameter. So for any x, we have uh, the point x, and here we have a delta function, x minus y. Yes? And we take this function uh, and uh, we shift it, multiply by the value of g of x, and uh, find the sum of this, uh, so to say. Yes? And uh, then uh, we have the function uh, g of y. So, this means that uh, any uh, so continuous uh, I write it in the bracket because in fact it relates to a much uh, wider class of function. Function g of uh, y uh, can be con uh, obtained as a sum of shifted delta functions delta of x minus y with weights uh, g of x dx. Yes? Uh, what, uh, what does it mean sum? No, uh, we can uh, imagine uh, that, uh, let's consider the integral sum. S H. H is parameter. Equals integral sum of this integral uh, g of uh, uh, say uh, consider the function g uh, from 0 to 1 of h uh, of g of uh, um, m h yes uh, delta uh, y minus m h uh, times instead of dx uh, because here we have finite uh, increment of um, uh, x uh, h uh, so uh, times h uh, m from uh, say 0 to n uh, equals uh, 1 divided by h. No, integer part. Yeah. Uh, and uh, let me make uh, one small but uh, trivial but important uh, transformation. Uh, G of mh uh, times 
h delta of y minus m h uh, m from 0 to n so what is it? We at, uh, consider these discrete points with the distance h, so it is 0, it is h, 2h, 3h, and this uh, is uh, nh. At every point we uh, put a delta function uh, multiplied by uh, this small number, h times the value of the function. Uh, by the way, uh, multiply this function, uh, the, uh, I have to say, uh, a uh, times delta of x, if a is some constant uh, uh, integral dx equals a from minus infinity to plus infinity. Yes, so, and uh, delta x is zero outside of uh, zero, so a times delta x is also zero outside of zero, but uh, the integral is not one, but it is a if you multiply by a. And so here we have uh, this, I draw this uh, uh, height is uh, the weight. So the weight is here uh, uh, the function g at uh, corresponding points multiplied by uh, this uh, uh, step size h. And now uh, what happens if h goes to zero? Uh, so here we consider uh, the system of finite by at large number of point masses, yes? And uh, when h goes to zero, the number of masses goes to infinity, the difference, distance between uh, this uh, mass and the next goes to zero. Goes to zero, it is h. Um, the masses themselves go to zero, but if you take here some segment, say segment a, b, yes, then the mass between a, b, which equals, in this case, sum uh, these masses uh, h uh, uh, times uh, g of uh, m h uh, m from a over h to b over h, yes? Uh, uh, goes to, uh, it is integral sum of integral of a, from a to b uh, simply uh, g of y dy. Yeah? So mass uh, between a and b uh, it is. It has, uh, uh, say, uh, in, uh, originally continuous density uh, g of x or g of y, and uh, we replaced it by a large number of small point masses. But these point masses uh, approximate this set of point masses approximates uh, the uh, continuous. Um, continuous mass. Uh, so these uh, small pieces so, uh, of mass, so we took all the uh, distributed mass and then uh, say uh, collected all the mass from uh, uh, <coughs> between these two points uh, or better say between the uh, midpoints of these two uh, neighboring uh, segments we collected this mass here into one point mass uh, uh, the uh, middle um, and this is uh, what is written here uh, so this means that in this integral sense what is written here uh, we can uh, say that Uh, any 
continuous function g of x can be approximated by systems uh, finite of point masses uh, 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 continuous function uh, 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 finite sums of shifted delta functions with uh, appropriate uh, weights. Uh, let me write it again, it's important. So, g of x equals, let me put it uh, uh, in this, limited as a mock limit when, uh, say, h goes to zero, sum g of mh delta uh, times h times delta of x minus m h uh, m goes from 0 to n divided by a, uh, 1 divided by h. No, it is uh, on the segment from 0 to 1. We can uh, do it for on any other segment. Yeah, so these are the weight equals sum uh, say uh, C uh, M H H because uh, it is uh, uh, depends on H uh, times delta of X minus M H uh, Uh, sum m from 0 to 1 over h. Uh, this is uh, the integer part of 1 over h. If uh, it is not <coughs> integer number, we take integer part. Now, similarly, uh, we can uh, consider the following uh, situation, more dynamic. Uh, consider the motion uh, of a body, you know, say of material point of mass M, under the force F. Now, F uh, depends on T. Then, we, uh, we, it is uh, position is x of t, it is velocity is v of t. It is a derivative of uh, equals dx dt. Yeah? And uh, uh, in mechanics we uh, know by the uh, Newton's law uh, that uh, v of t equals v0 plus integral from 0 to t uh, f of uh, tau uh, divided by m uh, d tau. Tau is parameter of integration I, uh, denoted by tau. Yes? Uh, so, uh, 
this is uh, the uh, uh, if we have a force f of t, it can be a <coughs> variable force. But uh, by this uh, uh, formula, we can replace. Uh, this uh, function, continuous function f of t, by sum of uh, delta function with small coefficients. So what is one delta function as a force? One delta function as a force is uh, uh, impulse. Yes, instantaneous impulse uh, or a blow. Uh, we just pushed our body uh, uh, in, at one moment or strike it. Yes, uh, so we replace uh, uh, continuous force by the system of these impulses. So uh, we have our body and instead of uh, pushing or pulling it uh, with, uh, say, continuous force, we uh, uh, use a, a hammer. Yes, and uh, 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 produce uh, these uh, frequent strikes on this body. So it will, <coughs> uh, its velocity will change by jumps. So here velocity is, uh, say, a continuous function, and here velocity will be uh, a series of jumps. Uh, this is, uh, say, this delta to. Uh, delta to is the interval between two uh, consecutive blows. Yeah? So, uh, you see uh, uh, that the result is a step function, uh, just staircase, but this staircase, if you uh, consider uh, very frequent uh, blows, this staircase becomes uh, closer and closer to continuous uh, curve. Yes, this is the meaning of this uh, limit. Uh, it is, uh, uh, I would say, mock limit or fake limit uh, because, uh, uh, no, in uh, uh, the more rigorous analysis it is called uh, weak limit, yes? But we are studying weak solutions, so weak limit is about the same thing as weak solution. Uh, and we, in the next lecture, I will continue uh, how, to, uh, how appears a delta function in weak solution of uh, uh, the string equation. Uh, so let me finish at this optimistic note and the uh, uh, next uh, lecture will appear soon. For now, I wish you to have a good time. Bye.